the way to survive is not to listen to me or other people, just stay with what you know. If people invest in only what they themselves know a lot about, then they will know what to do if things go right and they will know what to do if things go wrong. If I told you to buy X and it went up, you wouldn't know what to do if it went up. You don't know why you bought it. And if it went down, if it went down, you'd blame it on me. Yeah, you wouldn't know what to do then. You'd blame it on Jim Rogers, but you wouldn't know what to do. So please, if you want to be successful, stay with what you know. And if you don't know anything, do nothing. Put your money in the bank and wait. I always would just look for cheap things to invest in. I didn't care about where they were or what they were. It never occurred to me. I thought everybody did that. You know, I would find markets that were cheap and I would invest in them. Some of them were considered strange. I can remember when Germany was considered strange to, to American investors. But I was just looking for cheap places, cheap things, and I would invest in them. Then people heard about it. They said, oh my gosh. You must be crazy. But they kept working. And so people said, he's Indiana Jones. He goes to places where other people don't go and looks for adventure. Yes, I did look for adventure in my own life as well, but also in my investing life. But it wasn't looking to have a name. It was just looking for something cheap. There was a study which was done recently and that the number one ambition for people, the number one dream, not everybody, but is to get in your car and drive around the world or your motorcycle or whatever. It was my dream too. I've done it twice, as you know. I did it once on a motorcycle and once in a car because I wanted to see the world and I wanted to have adventure. Uh, has the world changed enormously? And my even between my two trips, the world changed enormously. You know, my first trip, you, could, you couldn't use credit cards, you know, on the first trip we were going around. Everything was very, very complicated. And there was the Berlin Wall, there was communism, there was Red China, there was Soviet Union, all that's gone now. Everything has changed dramatically. Whether we like it or not, the 21st century is going to be the century of Asia and the century of China. You know, 40 years ago, there was no China. Now it's the second largest economy in the world, et cetera, et cetera. There are gigantic changes and prosperity taking place in Asia. And I mean, I can look out the window and see it. Anybody who doesn't know about it can just look out the window or, or come to Asia, you'll see. It's astonishing the changes that have been taking place. But you know, the same thing happened in England in the early 19th century. Astonishing changes took, look at America. You know, America was absurd 150 years ago. People thought it was a joke. They quickly learned that America was an astonishing success. Uh, as you probably know, China's got the largest foreign currency reserves in the world. Japan is number two. Korea has huge numbers. Many Asian countries have staggering amounts of assets that they have built up. So people's money is coming to Asia, but also some immigration, nothing like it was in America in the 19th century or, or even the 20th century. But no, people are, I live in Singapore now and I see more and more foreigners uh, all the time. Somebody's coming not just with their money, but with their bodies as well. It doesn't matter what I think. Goldman Sachs is smarter than I am. We all know that. And I so we have, to, we have to listen to Goldman Sachs. Uh, it is certainly happening. Uh, it has certainly happened, as I said, in the last 40 years. There are astonishing changes that have taken place and continue to take place. And, you know, the United States is the largest debtor nation in the history of the world. I don't like that. But it's a fact. I have to deal with that. 40 years ago, America was still a creditor nation. So changes are taking place. And the world, if you want to be successful, you have to recognize changes and adapt to those changes. Do I like the fact that America is the largest debtor nation in the history of the world? No, I have two teenage children. But those are facts. And we have to deal with America. Developed a huge amount of power the last hundred years, it's been longer than 70 years, no question about that. And America continues to have a lot of power, but history shows that when, when countries get overextended, either economically, militarily, politically, whatever, they usually peak and go into decline. I'm not talking in my opinion, I, this is a simple historic fact.
-hmm. you know, 100 years ago, Britain was the richest, most powerful country in the world. There was no number two. 50 years later, it was bankrupt, literally bankrupt. The IMF had to bail out what had been the richest, most powerful country in the world. Go back in history. It has always been changing and it always will. Yeah. When countries get overextended, they usually wind up in decline. For and many others too, Spain, yeah. France, lots Spain. of places. Yes, you're right. Well, what should we do? We should, <laughs> we should cut spending with an ax. No, with a chainsaw. You know, we, we have this gigantic debt and it gets higher every day. We should cut spending. We should start reducing our debt. Are we going to do it? Of course not, David. Come on, if you ran on a policy in Washington, maybe you would get elected. But after a short time, people would say, wait a minute, this is very painful. We don't want to do this anymore. Nobody likes pain, even if they know what's good for you. So no, is America going to do it? No, I mean, I wish we would, but I, <laughs> well, I know simple facts. America is certainly, I mean, if you said to most people in America, where do you want to go? They would say America. Would you, where do you want to invest? They would say America. But that's because most people still don't know the facts, just as many people did not know the facts about the UK or about other countries that peaked and went into decline. Yes, no, America's great. We've got great PR, great movies, great TV, great lots of things. Uh, but that does not mean that beneath the surface there are not serious problems developing. David, I said, I have teenage children. I don't like it. It's a good time to be an old American. It is not a good time to be a young American. We had the longest bull market in American history. You know, starting in 2009, things were great in the U.S. That's the longest in American history anyway. It doesn't mean it can't last 40 years, but it never has. Countries always get a when things are good for a while, people get overextended, they get overconfident, they think it's new investors come in, new investors call their friends and tell them, I've discovered this new thing called the stock market, it's so much fun, and you can make money, and it's easy, it's easy to make money, you know, and that's always happens at the end of, boy, it has, always has happened, it's happening again. Things get overextended, things get expensive, and we leave, we always have a bear market. This is not the first time this has happened. Back to what I said before, they should only put their money where they themselves know a lot about where they're putting their money. Otherwise, when things go wrong, you don't know what to do. And things probably will go wrong again. You mentioned the 70s. You know, David, we had big inflation in those days. And as you point out, it's worse now. David, in 1980, the interest rate on United States government treasury bills was over 21%. That's not a typo. They had to raise interest rates extremely, what would be extremely high now, in order to kill inflation. Interest rates are nothing compared to 21% now. So if we're going to solve this problem, we're going to have to face a lot of pain. Do I like it? No but I have to deal with facts. You know, it's only less than two years ago that the Federal Reserve was saying, there's not going to be inflation. And then they said, it's temporary, don't worry. This is transitory. You know, these guys don't know what they're doing. Most central bank officials or bureaucrats or academics, they don't know how the world works. They just want to preserve their job. But you said they've raised interest rates. Sure they have, but I repeat, they were 21% on treasury bills, treasury bills, a short-term treasury bills uh, last time around. So no, we're gonna have to have a lot of pain before we solve this problem.